Hello, our objective today is to take a look at some of the technology integration tools that are available for use in the classroom. Uh, some of these I have recently discovered and others I've been using for a while. So let's take a look. The uh, first one that I would like to share with you is um, called Office Mix. You have to have PowerPoint 2013 to be able to use it. Uh, however, without you can even though you can purchase it for around a hundred dollars, I think you can also pay a monthly fee, get it for about six dollars and some odd cents per month, and then that way the Office Mix comes with it for free. Um, this particular um, uh, feature, the features here allow you to um, put video together with voiceovers and to annotate. Um, let's, let's look. I think sometimes seeing is better than telling. Um, with these presentations, uh, they're PowerPoints and you can do the voiceover like I'm doing with the screencast-o-matic that I use. But one of the neatest things is you can also do um, annotations with it. There are a lot of annotation tools that are on our um, tablets. You can mark it up as you go. There's other interactives that you can put in, videos, um, things like that, all the things that Nearpod does. Um, Mix does it also. You can put tests on there. Um, there are a lot of different features. And when I went to that recent meeting, I, um, the convention at, T at TCEA, there were a lot of people very excited about this and said that um, they, they absolutely loved it. I really like this feature. It's, it's very difficult to um, find an annotation tool that is perfect. A lot of them you have to put the PDF in and upload that for students and it's hard for them to use on tablets but um, this one you can mark it up and uh, show them all the details uh, like that. Another tool I would like to look at is called Newzola. Um, the visual appearance of this is very appealing to students these days. It's, it's of course sort of a splash page collage with a lot of bright colors. The different headings that you have up here, world news is color keyed in red, um, orange for national, so on and so forth. And you can just click on it and it'll pull up a short summation of that story. And then if you click on it again, uh, it'll give you the whole story so that you can read all of it, which is um, pretty neat. So kids can canvas through here, select the ones that they want to see, uh, get the little quick preview. Um, I, I think that they're, it's very popular with um, kids. Another one that I already use is Smithsonian Tween Tribune. Here's one for Valentine's Day, an article that was on here. After they read the article, um, there's a question, critical thinking challenge at the end. Um, and usually these are higher level thinking questions on blooms where it's not just knowledge based, asking them details about what they read, but actually asking them to think about it, apply the knowledge they've learned, transfer it to something. Um, the articles in Tween Tribune um, are by grade level. So if you go um, to the main page, you can select whether you want, uh, you know, what grade you want to look at. This one right here is for sixth grade because typically I'm using um, this particular software for my um, sixth grade students and the type of stories it has on here, the current events, are um, something that they would find, you know, be interesting to them. It's also um, the nonfiction component of that, that they're reading articles and op-ed pieces and periodical type things. Um, it's part of the TEKS, and it's not just for English language arts. This is a, a literacy is a for all subjects, and this could be applicable for social studies, for science, um, for anything, since there's so many different types of uh, subject matter to uh, connect current events and what's going on in the world around them to 
um, to their subject matter. The next thing I want to uh, show you is a PowerPoint that um, is, was directed specifically to English language arts and reading, but could be used for some other things as well. So I would like to share uh, this URL here. Uh, is the one that will connect you not only to this PowerPoint but to some other resources where you can find things. A lot of people like memes these days and so we start out with this one. Um, and the answer, are we going to do anything and fun in class today? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, so Newslia is the first product, and the way this is set up, it says the reasons why this is a cool thing, and then the reasons that it might not be um, quite so great. And so this one tells you it can find and assign articles customized by reading levels. Uh, it can keep um, uh, a bank of the quiz scores, annotate as they read, a lot of really, really um, neat things. Uh, you might not want to use it because, um, of course, there's a trial and then there's a fee. Um, and you have to kind of set up things for the pro version. So that's something to think about when you're looking for these different things. Here's an example of what that would look like. Another one that I want to show you is called Notable. Uh, it allows you to annotate and highlight PDFs and Google Docs. Uh, some of the reasons you might not like it is because um, it does become your default PDF viewer. And a lot of people don't like that. Um, notable. You can do this with annotation and PDF documents again. Um, here's what that might look like. Kaizena is another uh, product. It's neat because it leaves typed or spoken word feedback. That's unusual. It's almost always typed feedback that you get, but you can get verbal on this one. You can select from four color choices for highlighting. It can link to your Google Drive. You get a lot of good customer support. It's still in the beta mode, um, and the initial setup can be a little bit problematic. Um, it's great to have feedback. I've, I've used something uh, the last couple of years called SWORD. Uh, it's by Panther Learning Institute, and they do an online um, writing test as AP prep. They read uh, a prompt and write about it, and then there's peer editing involved, and it's all online. They And so the value of getting feedback on the written work is part of the learning process um, and then the annotation is a valuable skill that they're going to have to do in high school and in higher ed. So here's an example of what that one would look like. Kid blog. Um, I think wikis and blogs and all of that is, is trending right now in schools. They've been talking about it for a while. Uh, I know I was at a school that had wikis and blogs for students and teachers as a way to communicate and that's been maybe eight nine years ago so since then it's grown even more and it's pretty common and teachers are always looking for ways to um, create a walled garden for students to be able to do this in a safe environment that's monitored and parents can also sign up to be part of the class to see what's happening um, so this is a, a new one that uh, I think uh, allows kids to do the blogging. Um, the free version only allows for two classes of 50 and it's $35 per year per teacher. Um, you know that there's a lot of things that cost a lot more than that. Um, let me show you this one real quick. Nice net. I've used this. Um, I would put a question out there the students would join the class much in the same way as you do with Google Classroom. Um, and then I'd put a question and the whole class would answer it. The, everyone could see each other's thread, the thread of discussion, the, each other's response, um, and kind of piggyback off that, learn from it, and use it as a springboard for discussion later. 
Uh, I really like this. Uh, it, it, and I, it, it engages them with each other and gets them in the habit of, of uh, you know, reading and looking at what the others have to say. So NiceNet is the one that I've used. Kid Blog, I think I might take a look at that and try it, but I haven't yet. Nearpod uh, was part of this presentation. Uh, it talked about uh, why that's neat. I've used Nearpod to create, I think, about six lessons at this point, six or seven. And um, I love it because you get to embed the video. Have There can be reading assignments formative assessments, summative assessments, um, different things. You can send it to the students as homework and then they can do it as, as sort of a flipped classroom type thing, uh, or you can do it in class. When the, um, when the trial expired though, a lot of those features go away. That You can't send it as homework at that point um, and you can't embed videos and there, a lot of the things disappear so once you've created them, you own them forever, but uh, you, the, you have to um, consider that that's only for a couple of weeks and that you're going to have to buy in, commit to it, if you're going to use all those features all the time. To really get the best use of it, I think you need to have all the features. And one of the reasons it says you might not love it is because there is such a limited number of things you can do with it if you're, if you're not committing and jumping in with both feet and paying the fee. No red ink. Um, this is created by teachers. It links to Edmodo. I think it was Chris Long who was using Edmodo last um, last year and looking at that, which is another yet another uh, thing similar to um, Nearpod, similar to Kahoot. And similar to Socrative or Socrative, as some will say, um, they all have pretty much the same thing. Um, grade level gives you heat mapped results, 100% um, grammar for this particular one. Um, so it says you may not like it here again, limited free version. That seems to be a reoccurring theme that uh, if you don't buy it, the full pro versions, then you don't get to do much after the trial expires. Um, I think it's the, the point here is that you really have to compare the features on the different ones and see which one's going to work best for you. Uh, Zondel um, is another one. It has gamification options like badges, grades, and rewards. It's really focused for third through seventh grade, um, and you can link it to Edmodo which is a, a really good feature. Kahoot is another one. Uh, it's free, very interactive and engaging, compatible with any mobile device, uh, teacher created content. I like this, but it, it's sort of like Socrative in the sense that you have to build those tests most of the time, the, or at least I do. I don't use any pre-made um, thing for like the teacher created content, I would just make my own. So it's time intensive when you're building that bank of assessments. Once you have them, it's really great. It would be really great to use. Um, and you can't overuse any of these things. I think it's a, the key. One of the key things about technology is that can't just be like an everyday um, using the same thing all the time. You use a little bit here and there, pick and choose different things to enhance the instruction, embed those things and integrate them in there to enhance the lesson, but don't just do the same thing with the same um, software every single time because they will get, get bored of it. Um, and then here's some uh, extra links, bonus links. So that's the end of part one. There's a part two with even more goodies to take a look at. Um, thanks for watching.